Welcome to another video here on Debaco University. You've tuned into one on fracture patterns in glass. So here we're going to go over some of the details. We so with the fracture patterns so you can better understand how glass breaks and what it can tell us about what may have happened to cause this to occur. So first off, fracture patterns. Glass does have some flexibility when it's hit. So there's subtle stretching uh, that can occur. As the force increases though, fracture lines first appear, which may be followed by the glass breaking. So we don't necessarily always need the glass to break to get these fracture lines, but a lot of times it will be present when right before glass breaks, and then uh, there will be sometimes artifacts left at the end. Um, so it's really important to look at some of the details. Because those fracture patterns on the broken glass can provide clues about the direction and also the rate of the impact. Even though this is more of a qualitative um, data than more of a quantitative, remember quantitative can get numbers, more of a qualitative kind of assessment of what's going on, it still can provide some valuable information. So we're looking at our shattered glass, kind of this is our original glass point, this is our direction and point of impact. We have concentric fractures occurring, flakes and chips, um, radial fractures, so there's a lot going on here. Well, when the force is applied to the glass, it'll break in a very specific manner. Glass begins to break in the opposite direction of the force. So here's the force, here's the direction that it's breaking. Uh, and there's two types of fractures, the radial and the concentric fractures. And we'll see some examples of those in addition to being here on some actual pieces of glass. So as force is applied to the glass, a flat piece of glass, what is actually happening? Well, as the force is applied near the surface of the glass, the glass bends electricity. And kind of near the surface under compression, that is uh, the far surface under tension. So you're getting this kind of like bulge to occur. The fracture will start to deflect on the opposite surface. The fracture will move towards the near surface and simultaneously move outward from the central point of the fracture, starting to kind of get this expansion phase from that compression, that tension is spreading, in this case, up and down on this vertical piece of glass. The fractures that radiate from the central point are called radial fractures. The fracture may stop at this point, but there is still stress that is yet to be released when this force is being applied. So when the far surface is put under tension at the point of the force, areas around this tension are then compressed. This stress causes the tension on or near the surface of the glass, which can cause fractures on the near surface. So basically what's happening, we can see here in the picture number three, when well, that's occurring, we have this compression, we have this tension. Uh, because we have that bending, we're having these other points of high stress, and that's what's causing these fracture points, these kind of weak points to develop um, within the piece of glass. And because we're talking over a larger area, we're getting a pattern that is beginning to develop. Now, primary radial fractures. So looking at some of the options here, when glass breaks, the fracture patterns uh, form on the surface. Uh, breaks called primary radial fractures are produced. And those radial fractures we can see here, they're kind of like the points that literally radiate outwards. These fractures start at the point of impact and then radiate like spokes of a wheel outward from there. And that's what we kind of see that starburst effect. These radial fractures form on the side opposite um, the point of impact. And we can see a great depiction of them here. These kind of sideways ones here are going to be the concentric fractures, but right now we're focusing just on those radial ones, those kind of like sunbeam ones. Those con uh, concentric fractures, so those next kind of uh, fractures that do occur as well. Here the radial ones we talked about, those lines, now we're looking at the ones uh, kind of going in a circle. And there are also um, secondary fractures uh, that can be referred to as secondary fractures that form. These fractures take the form of concentric circles around the point of impact. That's why sometimes they're called concentric. They kind of have that ring kind of appearance. These concentric circles that um, have the same center, you can see them also clearly evident here. These concentric circles at the same side of the glass as the point of impact. So that's why it's important too to try to make note of what side uh, of the glass, if you can in investigation, what side was the inside or the outside. Now is the four rule for determining um, the side of impact. And that's looking at the kind of catchy term here where ridge lines on radial fractures are at right angles to the rear or the side opposite of the impact. And we could look, see if we look really closely, we can see that uh, fracture propagation direction here. 
Now, there are exceptions uh, to this rules. There are sadly with many rules. Uh, the exceptions are uh, tempered glass, uh, dices without forming these ridges because of the way that it's made. Also, very small windows held tightly in a frame that do not bend or bulge very much. Uh, those can kind of avoid this rule. And windows broken by heat or an explosion have really no point of impact, kind of not allowing this rule to be applied to them. Uh, now, if we have a bullet hole in glass, well, this is where the projectile hits the glass surface and the glass bends and energy dispersing from the point causes radial fractures to occur on the side of glass opposite the point of impact. And here's just a prime example here, a vertical piece of glass, a bullet traveling from the left side to the right side and what's going on here. The stress marks on the edges of the radial fracture can conform in a, a specific way, which shows the direction of the impact. Stress marks are curved in this case. On the uh, one end of the curve runs parallel to the glass surface, the other end of the curve runs perpendicular to the glass. So if we kind of see these radial fractures indicated here, we also have these concentric fractures here. That's looking um, straight on a piece of glass. If we take that glass and turn it to the side, what we see is located right over on this side here. Now, um, object entry and exit points, that can be very important when trying to determine whether the bullet came into the car or out of the car. Waves of energy from the projectile reverberate from the point of impact, causing the glass to fracture in a cone shape. The side of glass that has stress marks, which are parallel to the surface, is the side which sustained the initial impact. The result is small entrance hole and a larger exit hole in the glass if you're able to compare both sides. Surrounding the hole made by the projectile, there will be concentric rings, known as the concentric fractures. It's really important to take a look at those to be able to determine, in this case, whether the bullet came into the car or exited out of the car through the glass. Now, successive penetrations of glass here. When there have been successful penetrations of glass, it's frequently possible to determine the sequence of impact by observing the existing fracture lines and their points of termination. A fracture always terminates at an existing line of fracture. So this can kind of be even important if we have multiple bullet holes going into a piece of glass, trying to determine which one was fired first, which was the first point of entry, what was fired second, third, and so on, can help then determine the order, which can then help determine, uh, if we look at the interior of a room, for example, where we'd be looking for bullets and where that kind of person, if they were shot or had a fatal wound to them, what where they may have been placed and what bullet caused that, um, sadly, that death to potentially occur. Now, last we have breakage of glass from fire. As I mentioned, this was a little bit different, and we see an image of that right here. So during fire, glass may break as a result of heat fracturing, which produces a different pattern than impact. Wavy fracture lines develop in glass that have been exposed to high heat. Glass will tend to break toward the region of higher temperature, and if the glass was not broken before the fire, there will be no radial or concentric circle fraction patterns in the glass that is broken by very high heat. We kind of see that um, textured-like look to the pattern here of breakage of glass during fire, and that can be very important for arson, determining where that fireman located the heat of that fire, um, but again, that glass will be fractured, but it's going to have a very different and characteristic look if it was a result of heat than if it was a result of impact.